Hi there. What makes two places to have different time at the same moment? For example, in Ghana it might be 16 hours while in Germany it's 18 hours. What causes this time difference? This is a online school and in this lesson we'll be looking at time and speed in earth geometry. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to know what time zones are, how to calculate time, how to calculate speed, and some study tips for handling time and speed in earth geometry. What are time zones? Time zones are just regions where there's the same standard time being kept. For example, in this diagram here we've got the first column representing the time zone which is 5 hours behind the coordinated universal time. Or places in this region include Mexico, Colombia, Jamaica and Canada. These places will have the same time. Therefore, they will be said to be in the same time zone. Another time zone here indicated is one which has got no increase compared to the coordinated universal time. This is the Greenwich Meridian time zone where we've got Ivory Coast, Iceland, Senegal and London. These countries all have the same standard time being kept. Therefore, they are in the same time zone. The United Kingdom, Angola, Algeria and Poland are also in the same time zone which is one hour ahead of the coordinated universal time. Wow! The last example here of a time zone is that which is two hours ahead of the coordinated universal time. Zambia, Zimbabwe, Germany and Sudan are some countries that are two hours ahead of the coordinated universal time. Don't worry about what the coordinated universal time is. By the end of this video you would know what that is. In this diagram that has just been shown here you can see the different time zones which make up the earth. The time zone is given by the key below. We've got UTC which is the coordinated universal time. Countries falling in this region have got no increase so their time is equal to the coordinated universal time. While those with plus one are one hour ahead of the coordinated universal time. You can see that each of these time zones is indicated in a specific color. So for plus one, those countries in yellow are the countries that belong to that time zone. Now, how many time zones should you know as a student? Basically, in the Zambian syllabus, you should know these two time zones. Greenwich Meridian Time and Central African Time. Greenwich Meridian Time is just the same time as coordinated universal time. There's no increase to the coordinated universal time or decrease to it. While for Central African time, you add two hours to the coordinated universal time. You should be able to understand and remember these two time zones as they might be used in questions. You should also note that Greenwich Meridian time may be also just abbreviated as GMT while Central African time might be abbreviated as CAT. So don't get confused when you find such abbreviations being used in questions. With that said and done, now let's look at how calculating time is done. Before we get into any calculations, it's very important that we get the fundamentals of measuring time. There are basically four fundamentals or four principles that you should always remember when you're calculating time in earth geometry. The first and foremost thing you should know is that all measurements of time are done using longitudes, which means that to find all these time differences we're talking about, we're, to we're talking about places being two hours ahead, places being five hours behind, all these concepts are brought about because we know how to use our longitudes. Then one thing that is divided into three parts is how rotation of the earth is related to time. One day, which is 24 hours, is equal to one rotation of the earth. 
Therefore, we say 360 degrees is the same as 24 hours. When the Earth rotates, one complete rotation, it's been rotating for 24 hours. While in one hour, the Earth rotates an angle of 15 degrees. If we further make relations, we can find that one degree is the same as four minutes. These four things we've talked about here are the fundamentals of time. If you confuse any of these, it might be a bit difficult to do much of calculations in Earth geometry. However, you should also remember that time increases as you go east. Most people might forget this, but how do you remember it? It's very easy, just think of your number line. Zero is that prime meridian, or the Greenwich meridian, which is the base of measurement, right? Then as you go right, you can agree with me, the numbers increase, right? As we go left, the numbers decrease. That's the same with the Earth. When we're measuring time difference on the Earth's surface using Earth geometry, when we move towards our east, time increases. When we move towards our west, time reduces. To get a further understanding, let's look at two examples. The first example will be very simple. The second one will involve you to pay much attention and get these principles of how to handle questions on time. In question one, we're being told it is noon in London, which is on 51 degrees north, zero degrees. What is the time in Canada, which is five hours behind? This is one of the simplest questions you might find. If you can see, London is on zero degrees, which is the prime meridian, while Canada is on a certain longitude, which we don't know. In this question, we don't need to use any longitudes. We just need to know what noon means and what we need to do to that five hours. Noon means it's 12 hours, then Having that we've been told Canada is 5 hours behind, we're going to be subtracting 5 from this 12. Now, some have forgotten their time calculations already, or they don't practice them. In S geometry, you need to remember such calculations. Here, we're subtracting 12 from 5. How do we show it properly? You can see we can't get 5 from 2. Therefore, we need to borrow 1 from the 1 in 12 and then remain with 0 therefore this number here becomes 12 then we do our math then we have 7 therefore the time in Canada at the same moment is 7 hours a.m. very simple question now let's look at question 2 where we are told that two helicopters fly from point B to point D which is 45 degrees north 27 degrees east. They take off at 10 p.m. local time at D. Then, if local time at B was 18:40 at takeoff, on what latitude does B lie? This question is a bit complex. If you didn't get it, you can pause the video and read it for yourself and understand it. But what we've been asked here is just to find the longitude on which B lies using the time that we've been given. The first thing we do here is finding the difference in time between B and D. When we get a difference in time, then we can continue. So let's do just that. You can see that at takeoff, it's 22 hours at point D. And at the same moment when the plane or helicopters are taking off, it's also 1840 at B. Therefore, these two places are separated by a certain time margin. And we can calculate that by just subtracting 1840 from 22 hours, which is the same as 10 p.m. This time, we're borrowing an hour from 22, and therefore, our calculation will look something like this. We have a 6 there. You can think of it as a 60 or a 6. 6 minus 4 is the easiest way to think of it. And we're going to have a 20. Then we're left with a 21 on our hour side. 
we need to subtract 8 from 1. Therefore, we're borrowing a 1 from our 2. So we're left with 1. And then we carry a 1. The number becomes 11. And then we do the subtraction. You must note there's a 1 and a 1 left this side. So they simply give us 0. This is the time difference between B and D. Therefore, if we find this time difference, it will be very helpful for us to finding the angle between B and D. If you can remember, I told you there are four principles you should remember. We use longitudes when finding our answers. 360 degrees is equal to 24 hours. 15 degrees is equal to one hour. One degree is equal to four minutes. So we're going to use those principles to find this number which is 3 hours 20 minutes or simply the time difference we're going to convert it into degrees there are two methods to do this we're going to start with the simplest which is directly related to those principles we just talked about so we're going to first get the 3 which is in hours and multiply it by 15 gives us 45 so that 3 hours is the same as 45 degrees. Then the 20 minutes is the same as 20 divided by 4. 1 degree is equal to 4 minutes. So we're going to find how many 4 minutes are in 20. The answer is 5. If you can do the calculations with me. And now we add these two numbers to get... 50. This 50 degrees is the angular distance between B and D, which means in this 50 we have, we've got the angular distance for D from the prime meridian and the angular distance for B from the prime meridian. So what we're going to do is get rid of the angular distance of D from the prime meridian, then we're going to be left with the angular distance or longitude B. We borrow a 1 from the 5 there. And then 10 minus 7 gives us 3. 4 minus 2 gives us a 2. Therefore, the longitude on which B lies is 23. Now, the question comes here. Will it be degrees west or degrees east? Just observe the time differences or the times at which these helicopters took off. At D, it was 22 hours, while at B, it was 1840 hours. So, can you see that B is actually behind, while D is actually ahead? So, our angle here, or our, the, lat, the longitude we are finding, is going to be less than 27 degrees east, or it will be on our western side. And from our answer, we can see it cannot be 23 degrees east, because the angular distance then will be very small. So, we are going to say this will be 23 degrees west. Now, before we arrive to that final conclusion, we can also find this in another way. We get our 3 hours and multiply it by 15, get our 45, then we write our minutes in a fraction, multiply it by 15, and get 5. We add the two numbers and you can see we get 50. Common question is how did we get the fraction? Well, it's very simple. I'm going to try to use a calculator here so that when you have fractions that are not easy to be made, it will be still easy for you to make the fraction. What we do is this. We get the value for our minutes in the time difference, which is 20. Then we divide it by 60. So we're just finding the fraction of 20 minutes 
in 60 minutes when we hit equals it's going to give us a number usually it's a decimal point number now how do we convert this into a fraction on a calculator on this calculator we're going to use this button here this button as you can see has got a shaded square over an unshaded square if your calculator is identical with this one you're very lucky now some calculators won't be exactly like this one what happens is they will have a different way in which this button is given it will be a b slash c this button can also be used to make this decimal number into a fraction this kind of calculator we need to press shift then use that button i've just talked about and we're going to have our answer converted into a fraction this is how we got that one over three you should know that this fraction can also be done mentally it's very simple we can see that 20 can get into 63 times sometimes you also find fractions like this one here that has been just shown if you say 5 divided by 3 and then the decimal number you get you convert it to a fraction this will be the answer you will get this kind of answer means that the first number we have is a whole number while the other two numbers are the fraction in that whole number it's just the same as 1 2 over 3 with this said and done, I'm sure I won't have any problems with using this button on the calculator. So, question 2 was quite long, but yeah, our answer is 23 degrees west. That's all with time and this is what you expect. You need to be able to make those relationships between longitudes and angular distances. Therefore, it's very important for you to check out our video under angular distances to get to know how we did all this math with angular distances. Let's look at how we can calculate speed now. Under speed, we also need to know some fundamental principles. There are not so many when we're talking about speed. The first is the formula for speed, which is equal to distance over time. The next is that the distances used to find speed are calculated using concepts in earth geometry. So if you haven't looked at the video where we learn about how to calculate distances, it's very good for you to check it out and get to learn how we find distances. But if you know how to find them, well, let's get into calculating speeds. We'll look at an example here, just one, and see how we calculate speeds. In this question here, we've got this sphere here, which is labeled 60 degrees north, 25 degrees south, 0 degrees and some longitudes there which have got values. The question is reading that a plane flies from P to X in 10 hours. What is its speed? In brackets, you can say that you can see that we've been given the value for pi to use, which is 3.142 and the radius of the earth which you are supposed to use. In this case it's 6370 or 6370 kilometers. The first step in this question is finding the distance between P and X. When we find that distance then we use it to find the speed. However, we won't go that way as Director Vice just said it. We're first going to find the radius of the latitude 60 degrees north. We substitute our values. We get our calculator, punch the values in 6, 3, 7, 0, 60. We hit equals and it gives us our answer which is the radius of latitude 60 degrees north this is not our final answer but it will help us to find 
our answer. If you don't know what we're doing, check out our video on that how to find distances. You know this procedure. Now, after we find the radius of this latitude, now we can find the distance between P and X. We're going to use the formula PX is equal to theta over 360 times 2 pi R. The R we're going to use is the R we're just from finding, which is the radius of latitude 60 degrees north. The theta is the angular distance between P and X. So to be 90 over 360 multiplied by 2 pi, we keep the pi until the end. Then we multiply by the radius we just found. Like we did under the lesson talking about distances in earth geometry, we're going to try to simplify this before we go any further. The 90 there can go into itself giving us 1, can also go into 360 giving us 4, and we can see there's a 2 which can go into itself there 1, another 2, into that 4 gives us 2. Therefore, in our numerator we only have 3185 pi or in a denominator 2. So Px will be equal to 3185 pi divided by 2. So now we get our calculator and find the answer of this. Remember pi is 3.142. We're not going to use the pi on the calculators. This will give us a different answer. 3.142 multiplied by the value of pi we've been given sometimes it might be 22 over 7 but in this case we've been taught to use 3.142 we close our brackets and divide by 2 we hit equals it gives us our answer this is the distance between p and x now this is the distance we're going to use to find our speed. We said speed is equal to distance over time, if you can remember. So we're going to get this distance we found and then divide it by the hours the plane took to fly from P to X. And just like that, we're going to find our speed. When you hit equals, gives us the answer. The answer is not so much different. It's just the decimal point that has moved. And yes, that's our speed. Now, in this question, our distance was in kilometers. Our time was in hours. Therefore, the speed will have the unit kilometers per hour. We round off this figure to the nearest whole number. Therefore, our speed is 1,001 kilometers per hour. This is how we work with speeds in earth geometry. With that said and done, now let's look at some stat tips you should know. You can remember at the beginning of this lesson, we talked about coordinated universal time or UTC. What is this? Coordinated universal time is just the common standard across the world. This is the time used as the standard time. It might be sometimes mistaken for GMT because Greenwich Meridian time is exactly the same as Coordinated Universal Time. However, Greenwich Meridian time is a time zone while Coordinated Universal Time is just that time which is used as a standard. You should be able to note this. It's very helpful. You'll be taken very smart for you knowing this study tip. The second principle is about daylight saving time. This kind of time comes about due to the change in length of day and night. So this is the practice of setting the clocks forward one hour from standard time during summer months and back again in the fall in order to make better use of natural light. If you've experienced that time of the year when the night feels so short, while the day looks or feels very long. To avoid that, 
they came about with this kind of time, daylight saving time, where the clocks were adjusted due to the change of the duration of day and night. So this is what basically daylight saving time is, the adjusting of clocks due to the change of length of day and length of night. Remember, this is in order to make better use of natural daylight. Last but not the least, you should be able to know the two units of speed. There's knots and kilometers per hour. What are knots? Knots are just when you find your speed using distance in nautical miles, while kilometer per hour is when you find your speed using distance in kilometers. This is basically how these two units come about. So remember that when your radius in the equation is given in nautical miles, your speed won't be kilometers per hour. It's going to be knots. Thanks for reaching to the end of this video. Now, go out and find some questions and leave comments in the comment section about any difficulties you find.